All right. Hey, everybody. Chris Dunn back with you. And today I have a really good friend of mine on the line, John Fedro. John, how you doing? Doing great. Thanks so much for uh, inviting me. This is awesome. Yeah, man. I've been looking forward to this interview for a long time. Um, John is actually one of the most successful real estate investors I know. And it's really interesting because I've actually known John for, what, over 10 years, almost 15 years, something like that, right? Yep, right. So, John actually, he's kind of mastered a unique niche in the real estate space. And I wanted to bring him on today because um, he's got a very interesting story. He's helped a lot of people. He's made a lot of money and he's built up this empire. And um, I'm just really proud of him, man. Because like I said, he's, he's a good friend of mine. And I wanted just to bring him on and kind of have him share all of his experience with you. And I interviewed John a couple years ago. But since then, John's actually done some really big things in uh, real estate. So, John, why don't we start by, you know, you just kind of explaining who you are, what your background is, how you got started in real estate, maybe where you failed and, and the niche that you're in and how you succeeded. Oh, wow. That, that's a multi-part question. I'll do my best at wrapping it up. Pretty, pretty <laughs> All right. The, uh, so there's, um, got started super young. I feel super young, um, late teens and, you know, looked young, felt young, had a beater car, um, was living with my parents or my uh, mom at the time, um, you know, or living, living in our house. So I just didn't, had nothing, knew nothing about real estate, but I had such a fire inside of myself while I was going to community college, I was going to school, had two part-time jobs that I didn't like, um, and I wanted to get out of that. I knew that I did not want to be in school. I didn't want to work for somebody for the next 20, 30, 50 years of my life. So I had all this desire and passion. And I think that that's worth noting because without that, I mean, the opportunities that, that were presented to me, you know, I would join Amway or, you know, do a multi-level marketing business or continue going to school and become a doctor pre-med, which I, what I was going for, or, a, you know, real estate, which again, it kind of came across my desk. I, I picked up a book. A roommate at the time had, and uh, you were that were that roommate. Um, yeah, so that's say. right, man. It, it's funny because a lot of people don't know my story, which is, I I actually dropped out of college the first year. I met John in college, and ac actually at the gym, and we were talking about how much we hated college, and you know I was looking to get out of it. <laughs> and um, terrible influences on each other. <laughs> I know, right? Good it's it, but it's funny because like we we were talking like you were I think slinging cell phones selling <laughs> cell phones and uh you know you were in some mlm business and i'm like dude come on that's a scam you gotta get out of that but <laughs> but it, it's so crazy now looking back and how like the traditional route just wasn't for either of us and, and a lot of the successful people we know kind of self-educated and it's cool because you, you have a unique perspective so I'll shut up now and kick it back to you and <laughs> let you tell your story. Well, like you said, it's, it's, um, it, it was interesting that, um, that we both had that different perspective. We didn't want, we weren't, we weren't lazy. Um, I don't think we still, we still are lazy. Um, but we knew that, you know, it, what, we knew that we didn't know everything and we certainly weren't making the money that we wanted to. I wasn't making the money that I wanted to. So I knew it wasn't just going to be from, you know, dropping out of school and doing nothing or getting a nine to five job. So I knew it was, you know, I had these thoughts of grandeur. I just didn't know what to do and I had so much fire inside myself. So when I picked up that book on your, you know, library, like you have behind you with the holding plants now and pictures, no books, but you had a library uh, of, of books. And I remember just looking at them. I mean, business and real estate and stocks and options and things I didn't know anything about. So I picked up the real estate ones and flipped through them. And in that weekend, I don't know if you remember, I went through that book or uh, those, those courses. It was three big courses. I went through them twice and thinking like, oh my God, I can do this. And they were pie in the sky deals, like really round numbers, like, hey, in a perfect world, this could happen. But yeah, it was like one of those those infomercial courses, wasn't it? it like was, how to yeah. get rich in traditional real estate. <laughs> but at least it opened my eyes. Like I had no idea. I mean, I thought real estate was something that, you know, you owned and you lived in and then you died and you, your kids got it or went through probate. Or, well, actually, I didn't know anything about probate or anything like that. <laughs> so, so, so what happened though? Like you, you read those courses or you yeah. went through the, the right. DVDs and then like you tried it. What happened? Right. So tried it, did every, did almost everything that they said, knocked on doors, spent my small life savings at the time to do a mail campaign um, and put out signs and do a number of things. And this was Tampa in, in the height of the market where you could make money just by cleaning a window. 
Um, so, so, so you were marketing, trying to find deals. That's what you were spending your money on. Right. Trying to find single family home deals. I, I knew nothing about the type of niche that I was about to fall, to fall into. Well, after about three months of trying, really trying, um, and, and asking questions and, you know, trying to get answers, no results, made offers and offers and offers, nothing stuck. My first deal came from a seller who called me up. She was asking $8,000 for her home. This, this, was, this was in Florida, 8,000 bucks for a three bedroom, two bath. I'm like, what is going on? I was so green and new. I didn't even know to ask if this was a mobile home. So I got into the area like where the mobile home was. It was in a mobile home park. Most of us are familiar with mobile home parks. Well, I pulled into the park and I'm like, what is going on? I've never lived in a mobile home. Never. I don't think I had any friends that lived in mobile homes, no experience. So I drove into the park and I was think I was listening. I had my music loud because I was trying to get amped up. And I remember pulling into the park and just this wave of nausea just coming over me. And there were a few turns left before I got to the home. And I just remember pulling over and opening the door just in time to just get sick and purge on the side of the road. So you were so nervous that you got, you literally got sick literally got sick and I because I was going there to help a woman I knew she was I was in my late teens she was in her mid 40s I'm like how am I gonna help her she needs help she's ready to move I'm living with my mom or I'm, well you know in my in my mom's ta- townhouse and so so did I mean, you was, let me ask you this did you feel like an imposter did you feel like like I have no clue what I'm doing is that why you were so nervous Definitely. In a beater car, way too young, not sure what I was going to do, you know, very, very new into this business. And I did feel like an imposter completely. I knew that I cared, but I knew that I, there was so, there was so much that I was lacking and didn't know. So I remember, you know, closing the door, look, look, putting down the mirror and just looking at myself and like wiping my mouth off and being like, what the hell? Like, it, it would be so easy right now just to go home with my tail between my legs and make an excuse and, you know, come back later. Um, but I didn't, I went to the appointment. It was one of the best deal. Well, it wasn't the best deal, but it was like a really good deal. It kind of set the bar really high and I was able to buy that $8,000 mobile home for $3,000, but I didn't have the money. So I made her payments. I said, well, I can give you $300 today and then $300 for the next nine months. And that equals $3,000. And she went for it. And I went and I turned around and I cleaned up that home a little bit. I cleaned up that home, barely needed any work. And I resold it on payments the first time for uh, the mid to late 20s, 20, $20,000. Um, I think I got so you paid three grand in payments. You right. got the house for $300 and then you went and sold it for 20 something thousand bucks. With payments, yeah, like three thousand down. I think they gave me twenty five hundred down at first, and then monthly payments um, that I was cash flowing every month. Now, after a few so years, you made over two thousand dollars on the front end, right. and then you made a few hundred dollars or something every month. Every month, plus I discounted what I was paying to the seller, so I actually bought it for a little cheaper than three thousand. And then I, the people who I sold it to originally, the first people, they gave it back to me after two years. I sold it the next time for the high thirties, thirty. So what do you mean they gave it back to you? Like they stopped paying and and you kicked them out or something? Or correct, they just stopped paying and they said, you know, John, we 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 can't pay anymore. We need to leave. So we'd like to be, you know, out of this out of this situation. So you, so you basically got to sell that house more than once and you made 20,000 or sold it for 20,000 and made a few grand the first time and then sold it for 30 something the second time. Correct. Correct. And it sounds, I mean, this, this is the business. This is the mobile home investing business. Um, coming from an outside, you know, uh, folks watching this video, um, that may seem you know, too good or some sort of pie in the sky deal. Um, but that's the numbers that we're seeing. And it's amazing from the East coast to the West coast, there's opportunity to help buyers and sellers of, mo- of mobile homes. Yeah. So I, I know you've done deals literally all over the nation. Now you're partnering with people. You just bought a big mobile home park. Now, why did you go with mobile homes over like traditional you know, single family real estate. Um, was it something that you just fell into? Did you see that there was more competition with regular homes? Uh, were the margins just bigger? Why did you go that route? Because a lot of people, I think, are scared of that. Question. I don't think I've been asked that question sort of that way. And 
I think it's important to know that I wasn't in love with real estate. Real estate was the vehicle that was getting me to the lifestyle I wanted, which was a lot of cash flow, a lot of money, good income, security, a future moving forward, be able to pass these on to children. So it wasn't so much that, you know, it was I needed to be in a certain type of real estate. But when I was starting to invest for those first three months, I wasn't doing anything. So my first deal, I literally just fell into mobile home investing. And the first time I did that deal in the park, I mean, I could see there is a like this there's a lot of money here. Like there's no competition. The, you know, there's from buyers, from other investors, nobody else was doing this in the market and come to find out around the country, very few people are. So we have a really good opportunity to help a lot of sellers and buyers. I was embarrassed. I don't know if you know this, but for the first couple, actually, you definitely know about this because I remember having these, 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 these conversations where I was embarrassed about what I was doing. Like we were, I was making good money, but I didn't want to tell anybody like, you know, mobile home investing wasn't real estate. It wasn't posh. It wasn't prestigious. It wasn't something. Yeah. I yeah. I remember going to some, some real estate investment club meetings and like, you were very quiet about what you were doing. I knew you were doing deals, but I didn't really know what. And it, it's funny because like, it seems like everybody in real estate kind of has, it's the same with like trading or any kind of investment. It's like everybody has a herd mentality. People just kind of want to follow what everybody else is doing, but you were so different. You were like, oh shit, I found this niche. I'm making really good money. So part of me thinks it was kind of like you didn't really want to get the word out. But um, what was it about traditional real estate? Like I, I know you tried to do like, you know, the courses and all the stuff that those infomercial guys talk about. Like, why do you think that is so much harder than mobile homes? Is it the competition or? The competition is a big factor. So the competition you have, not just the competition of other investors. If there's a single family home seller, if if you're the investor, she calls you, you don't give her a de- uh, uh, the offer that she wants to hear or you don't give her an offer, she's going to go right down that list of, of all the other investors in your area. So the competition for investors, the end buyers, you know, there, there are end buyers all around us that want to buy, mo- that want to buy traditional homes and they can go to a bank, they can get approved, you know, some of them, some of them can't, but a lot of people can, there's programs out there, mortgage programs, thousands of them, but with mobile homes, the, so, well, let's go to why the single family wasn't working. I didn't have money, didn't have experience. I was a small fish in a huge pond. Um, those are the biggies. Uh, with mobile homes, I could get into mobile homes with just the few hundred dollars that I had. I was able to, you know, there's that, um, you've read enough real estate books as well to know that like that cliche, you know, um, you know you're going to ride in there into the seller's home on your white horse and be a knight in shining armor and save the day for the seller. You know, and that, that, that doesn't <laughs> yeah. really happen with traditional <laughs> homes because there's so many investors, there's so many kind of exit strategies. But with mobile homes, when I was picking up the phone and calling mobile homes or they would call me, it would be a night and day difference from traditional sellers because mobile home sellers, there's not a lot of help for them. They understand the value of what you're doing. So as an investor, it was so easy. I could listen to a seller's problems. I could help that seller. No competition, very little money, no credit, don't need to go to a bank. I mean, it was like... It, it, it's like it, the perfect storm it and it, like, it almost sounds too good to be true. It's like, you know, like you said, low competition, really big margins. You didn't need a lot of money to get started. It almost sounds like an infomercial, but it's the reality. And what's, what's, I guess the, the downside to working in mobile homes, if there is one. The, um, the downside is that you're not going to flip in most areas of the country. You're not going to flip these for, for all cash or for bank, for bank financing uh, that 90% of, of, of what we do, we're selling these mobile homes and receiving monthly cash flow, monthly payments um, for the. So you're getting like a, a small, like few hundred dollars to a few thousand dollar down payment. And then you're collecting payments and making money on the spread every month. Correct. Now we're, we're making considerable money, many, 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 many times our investment, but yes, that's a clear, you know, for some people I want to make six, six figures these, this next month. And that is not something that, you know, mobile home investing, individual mobile home investing in the parks where you just own the home, you don't own the land, you just rent the land or even mobile homes on private land. 
you know, you're going to buy as an investor, you're going to buy the home and the little piece of land that the uh, home sits on. Um, so there's all sorts of different types of mobile homes out there. Um, and we're able to create value with just about all of them. Nice. So what does a typical deal look like? What, you know, um, like if you took your average numbers, like what are you typically buying it for? And then what are you selling it for? What are you getting for a down payment? And what's the monthly rent and the spread? And I know it, there's probably a huge variation because you're doing deals all over the country. But if you just had to take like your average typical deal. So, perfect. Yes. Well, we, we definitely have some core rules that we don't want to break. Um, 99% of the time, general rule of thumb. So no matter what, East Coast to West Coast, which this blew my mind. I mean, I knew we, we could do it or I could do it, you know, in Florida where this started, uh, where I started this. But then to help people across the country has been amazing. So what, I, what we found out and what, what we won't do, we won't spend more if, if we buy a mobile home for all cash. We're paying anywhere from free to three, four, five thousand dollars for the home. Now, if we're making payments to a seller for their home, maybe we'll pay six, seven, or eight thousand dollars for a mobile home. But so wait, wait, you just that. said from free to a few thousand dollars. Why would you get a home for free? There's, you're going to be purchasing homes. You're going to be helping sellers from all sides of the spectrum. Sellers that really, really need your help and don't want to be in the home anymore. Maybe their home needs a lot of work or they're behind on lot rent payments. And then you're going to talk to other sellers on the other side of the spectrum that don't need our help. They have plenty of time, plenty of money. So in that spectrum, the free homes... Some of them are very beautiful and you can really get an amazing deal. Some of them need a little bit of work. Others you don't want to buy even if they're free. So they're, so I'll say this for the folks watching. It's not a question of if you're going to get a free home. If you're in this business, it's a question of just when you're going to get it because there are free homes out there. Um, it's just a matter thing. of do you want to do the work and catch up on the lot rent payments? Is that what the kind of the catch is, I guess? Well, you got to find the deal. The deal has to find you. Um, you have to negotiate it to free or you find it and it's a free a free price. You will have to probably do some repairs to the home, catch up lot rent. Um, and then so so the, a deal where like it's free is basically like somebody's like, look, I'm out of here. I don't want to do these repairs. I'm a couple months behind on lot rent. Maybe I owe 500 bucks or something in lot rent. Just take it. I don't care. Is that kind of what the scenario would look like? That's one scenario, or it could be a park owner or a park manager sell, selling the home. They say, oh. we don't get it. We don't, we're, we're not in the business of fixing this home up. If you want to fix it up and sell it, you know, have a few months free lot rent and then start paying us you know, lot rent here in a couple months. Because the park, it's win-win. The, the park gets that home fixed up and a good person in there. They don't have to do any work, and you get to sell the home, fix it up and sell that home. Um, so that's, that's really interesting, man. How many of these, like, if you had to guess how many free ones you've gotten over the past decade or however long you've been doing this, how many would you say you've gotten over a handful over five or six? Yeah. Nice. Um, in that, in that time. And it's, it surprised me because a lot of the, a lot of the members that I'm helping are able to get free, free homes. Um, and again, you can buy really junky ones, which are not what we're talking about, or you can get junky ones for free, which is not what we're talking about. You know, these are good quality homes, roof, walls, plumbing, AC, heat, appliances, carpet, you know, paint, decent quality homes, like really, really good homes. They're going to last another 20, 30 years. Okay. The homes that we do buy for the, the three to $5,000 in, in parks, because there's, there's the homes in parks and homes on land. We're buying them in parks for around three to 5,000. We're cleaning them up a little bit and we're reselling them on payments for upwards of the, usually the mid to high twenties. So you're, you're, so let's say you pay three grand to get one and then you sell it for 20. What do you get as a down payment and what's your typical like monthly spread? The down payment is subjective depending on the condition of the home when we resell it. So if it's a handyman special, we might only get $1,500 from our tenant buyer because you know, they have to still do some work to the home. So we're not, we can't charge five grand plus you do the the work to the handyman special. So if it's a handyman special that you're selling for, for payments, probably 1500 bucks, you know, something minimal. But if you're selling a nice home, it doesn't need any work. It's ready to be moved into a normal three, four, $5,000 or more move-in fee. 
from your from your from your tenant buyer and we're always selling with a minimum well not always but most of the time a five year minimum so you're collecting that that three hundred dollars every month we shoot for a minimum of three hundred in your pocket you're collecting that for five years and we aim to recoup all of our money. This is very important. We aim to recoup all of our money that we invested within 10 months maximum, but usually within about six months or less. That's, that's really incredible for anybody that knows real estate investing to make all your money back in 10 months on a rental or a, a seller financing in that type of scenario is huge. That The margin, you can't do that on single family or you know multifamily regular homes. Granted, I, I think the, the numbers per unit might be bigger on like a single family or like a eight plex apartment complex. But for most people that are like just getting into real estate, it sounds like, you know, making a few grand up front and then a few hundred bucks a month spread is like an extremely like low risk way to get started in real estate. And, and it's nice because the competition's lower and the margins are bigger. So you can like grow your cash flow bigger. That's kind of what it sounds like to me and what I've seen with you over the years. And now you're out there buying whole mobile home parks with hundreds of them. You know, it's funny that you mentioned that these deals are just so good. It's funny because I'm sort of jaded to mobile home investing now, because whenever I'm helping a member and we don't make our money back for like, like, cause I really shoot that. We try to make all of our money back. You know, the, the holding costs, the acquisition cost, the repair cost, if needed, I really want to make all that money back in about six months or less. So when we go over six months, you know, it takes us seven or eight or nine or 10 months to get our money back. I'm like, you know, I, I find myself being like, Oh, like kind of upset, like kind of like making or manufacturing this stress and being like, Oh, I really wanted to shoot for six months. And then, <laughs> and then you got to put it back and, into perspective yes. and know like, Oh yeah, this is way oh, better than anything else. What am I talking about? Right. It's like, <laughs> that's ridiculous. Just be happy with like nine or 10 months making your money back. You have another four plus years of cash flow. It's just so it's just funny to note, but these are, you know, absolutely, you know, the, the, what the deals are out there and the people listening, you can do a skinny deal all day long. Like you cannot make your money back in the first year. You can make a hundred dollars cash flow per month. And there, you know, that's, it's easy to do a bad deal in mobile home investing. I will say that there's been a lot of mistakes over the years, a lot of stress, you know, up and downs, um, along that. That's actually a really good point. What, what would you say is your biggest mistake that you've made with, uh, mobile home investing? Oh, um, you know, I started young. I've, I've been asking that question to a lot of people as well. And it seems like a lot of, a lot of answers they have is that they wanted to start earlier. I think I, you know, we, I started pretty, pretty young. So that's not a regret, um, but it could be. I think the biggest regret I have is a mindset regret. For the first few years of while investing, I thought that investing was like this zero sum game where if I won, the seller had to lose. It was me as the investor versus the seller. The more money they got, the less I got. Um, and that was, you know, and then it was all about like immediate profit. Like I wanted them to get the very minimal so that I could get the most. And that greed, that mentality of me, the investor versus the seller was completely wrong. So I, I think the biggest, you know, uh, mistake I was making was this mindset and it's not the investor versus a seller. It's the seller and the investor. Special home investing is definitely a people business, more than a real estate business. And with mobile homes, it's the investor and the seller joining forces to then sell or get rid of their unwanted home. So it, you know, you can join together with the seller and make so many more deals. Not only will your word of mouth reputation go up, um, the deals that you close will go up, your follow-ups will, will go up, the, punt, the money that you put in your pocket will go up, your anxiety will go way down. It's just, it's so, it doesn't even, I mean, it's like so basic, but when you're an investor, and I think a lot of real estate investors, it's sort of this kind of cutthroat mentality a little bit. Um, but we, when you can change your paradigm and really try to help sellers, um, all that other stuff that I just talked about, your business will go up and your um, anxiety will go down. I know. That's really great, man. I, I like that because, and, and you know, I don't think that's like a fluffy, like self-help thing. Like whenever you say join forces, like I think that's actually very literal. Like when you help a seller get rid of that, not only do you help that person, but you profit and everybody is happy and then they're going to spread the word. 
And um, I, I, th I think it's just about problem solving, right? So the better you are at just thinking about how can I help this person and, and solve their problem, the more money you're going to make. Um, what, what's one piece of advice that you would give to somebody that's starting out in real estate investing? Not even like mobile homes, but you know, there's so much bullshit around mobile home and or, or not mobile home investing, but just real estate investing in general. Like there's, you know, all these infomercials and like these get rich quick gurus. Like if you had to go back and talk to your 20 year old, self and give yourself advice and say, don't do this, do this, you know, maybe go down this path, avoid these mistakes. What advice would you give to somebody who's just starting out? Great, great question. The something that I notice, I, I don't like saying always or never, but something I notice almost always from newer type of in, newer, newer investors, ones that like are really new, kind of just getting into this is that they want to put out marketing or they want to do marketing and they want to analyze every home that comes in. So if, if there's a home, if they get an address, they want like if I this is the mentality of most newer investors. If I can make 500 bucks from a deal, I want to do it. Like there's a lead coming in. I want to pursue this until this thing either dies or I can't make money. And it's so important to specialize in real estate and also when to say no and when to say yes. So my advice is if you are newer in this business, specialize. It's so important when you're first in the business to specialize. Start doing deals under one niche, then you can make money, then you can learn about other ways to invest and open your portfolio. But specializing in the very beginning, um, but you don't know what to specialize in, mobile homes, uh, single family homes, flipping, REOs, probates, um, the list goes on. You can make money so many ways in real estate. So I would encourage everyone that's listening, even if you've been in this for a little while, take people out to lunch for the first few um, months, um, for the first few, first few months while I was investing, I took a bunch of seasoned investors out to lunch. And then I slowly kind of wean down as the months and years went by, but take people out to lunch that are experts in their field, ask them questions, see if you can help them, uh, and then really understand, hey, is this something I want to do? Is there a need for this in my, in my market? Real estate investing is completely possible. Like if you want to do something, you can just work your way backwards how to do it. The variable here in real estate is you. This takes effort. It takes hard work. It takes daily action, but is it possible? Absolutely. Absolutely. Is it possible in almost any type of real estate? So my advice is to specialize and to surround yourself with people that, you know, are doing what you want to do and then figure out, you know, no way I want to do, I don't want to do mobiles. No, I don't want to do commercial. No, I don't want to do probates. Ooh, I like doing this. So, you know, really figure out, get all that stuff. Don't spend any money, get that out of the way. Go take people out to lunch, figure out what you want to do, get a plan, and then jump in. I love that. And it, it's so true. It's like, uh, you know, trading the markets. Like there's so many ways to make money in the markets. There's so many ways to make money in real estate. There's so many ways to skin that cat. And like, I don't think there's one right way for everybody. You just have to figure out what works for you. Right. And it's so true. Like with newer traders, I see guys and ladies that are like, I just want to take every single trade, every single opportunity because they're excited and they're like, Hey, I just want to make money. And, and it's like, Whoa, kind of slow down grasshopper. Like <laughs> you have to learn, <laughs> you have to learn how to, to look for the best opportunity right and and to make sure that you're not opening yourself up to risk that uh you know that really you shouldn't take on so that's actually a, a good segue into this question have you ever lost money on a deal definitely oh yeah with mobile homes it is easy to do a bad deal um the four main sort of umbrellas of where people can lose money with with mobile homes is that you overpay for the mobile home happens all the time well to people that don't know what to pay, it happens all the time. So you can overpay for a mobile home. You have too much money into it. You're not going to make it back in 10, in 10 months or less. You overimprove the mobile home. You're going to have too much money into it. You're not going to make your money back. You have to charge way more. It's going to take a while to sell. Um, the third thing is that you put the wrong person in there. I've had nightmare people in my homes that I should have never put them in. It was like looking back, it was I was the worst landlord or worst, you know, if you got a pulse, you could go into one of my homes. Um, so putting the wrong people in your home, you can set yourself up for just an amazing time, no headaches, 
really, or, you know, a nightmare time. So the wrong people. And then the last thing that you can do is make a mistake for, for mobile home investing is you leave thousands of dollars literally on the closing table instead of selling these for three or four, you know, or instead of selling these, excuse me, for five plus years minimum of mobile home payments, you're selling them for two or three or four years. So you just don't make as much money. And again, that all sort of leads to that investor that's like, has that bitter taste in their mouth. Yeah, I tried investing in mobile homes once and it didn't work. Or the, the, the tenants, you know, did this and that. And it was a horror story and this and that. And ultimately, it's the investor's fault. So for me, when I've lost money, I've lost money on potential deals that I was too lazy and I didn't act quick enough and I didn't get them. I lost money because I went to, uh, after Hurricane Katrina in, in Mississippi, I, I went up there and I I. I was investing in mobile homes already for six, seven, eight years. And I'm thinking, you know what? There's a lot of opportunity here in Mississippi with these, you know, buying homes and rehabbing them and flipping them. Well, I got into four deals out there, spent a ton of my money. My credit went down a little bit, ended up getting out of them, but just wasted a lot of money because I was doing something different. I got greedy and I, I trusted too many people and I was just following that greed. So you took your focus off of what was working, which were mobile homes, and you tried to go into the rehab game and chase the herd and that ended up costing you some money? You got it. Yep. So those are the, so with regards to mobile homes, there's a lot of ways that I could have made a little bit more money. Um, I can only think of maybe one or two deals that weren't profitable where I actually lost a little bit of money, a little bit being, you know, a couple hundred dollars to maybe a thousand dollars. And then that's like, okay, that was a good lesson. Like, you know, I'm happy. Next deal. So nice. So, so basically the four ways to lose money are you overpay, uh, you fix it up too much, right? You put too much money into it. You get the wrong tenant in there or you don't sell it for what it's, what you really could get out of it. Is that right? That's right. And that sounds kind of juvenile or like, you know, you don't sell it for enough. Well, you just know what to sell it for and you sell it. It's so, you know, mobile homes and single family homes are like night and day or just apples to oranges. The buyers are different. The sellers are different. The retail prices are way different. What, you know, buyers and sellers are looking for are way different. So it's, it's really easy. I mean, it doesn't, to people that are listening, it's easy to make all those mistakes. So right. I'm not... That, that's good, man. I'm glad that you share that because like, it, you know, where the margins are so big and the competition is so little, like there, there is, you know, areas that you can screw up. There are areas that you can lose money. So I always like to ask that and kind of figure out, okay, well, what's the downside? What's the risk? What are the things that people really need to know about? And um, I, I think something that's really cool is how you've kind of graduated recently to the next level, which, you know, when, when you started, you were, I think, buying, you know, just mobile homes and parks. So you weren't owning the land. And then you moved up to build, you know, buying like single uh, homes on a, a plot of land. And now you just bought an entire mobile home park. Let's yeah. talk about that, man. Like how, <laughs> how did that happen? That, that's amazing. How many, uh, how many lots are in there? How many homes are in there? So there's 110 lots and there's, um, this was a long time coming. Like I really feel like I was behind the eight ball. My excuse back in the day, because as a mobile home investor working inside parks on private land, there's not a lot of us. So we, you, you develop a name for yourself. You're rubbing shoulders with park managers, with park owners. And over the years, I, I remember telling you this a few times that I was presented by for, for parks. Owners of parks came up to me, you know, they're a little bit older, they're ready to retire. You know, John, we, you know, we're kind of getting out of this. We know you, we like you. Would you like to make an offer on this park or can, can we sell this to you with payments? And like, like, like an idiot, I was thinking, no, I'm happy doing what I'm doing. You know, I'm making a sick return. I'm putting very little money into this. I'm making a crazy, you know, money back. And I was thinking, no, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So parks seem like a management game, uh, you know, intensive game. And I, and I didn't know it was just ignorance. And just, you think that like, maybe came from a little bit of fear of like what happened in Mississippi yeah. where, when you deviated from your plan before? It was fear there. It was fear because I was too young. That was a big um, hurdle. I remember you telling me a bunch of times that age is just a number. I mean, it doesn't mean anything. So, and I, and I was always sort of just, uh, you know, a little held back, a little reserved because I was a little insecure young. about being young. Right. But that's, B, that's BS. I mean, it's total BS. So, so I, I had these blinders on, didn't want to buy a park. And then just a few years ago, you know, my 
feelings changed. And, uh, and now I've segued from not only helping the individual sellers of mobile homes, you know, hey, John, we need to sell our mobile home. We don't want it. We're out to now helping sellers of mobile home parks. Hey, John. Yeah. Wh why do one individual deal when you can get a hundred? <laughs> exactly. You're talking to one seller, you're helping them. There's a, a lot, way more moving parts uh, and due diligence to consider, but you're, you're right. I mean, your one deal yields you, yeah, 20, 30, 80 homes versus just the one, the one home. That's but amazing, with that, man. With that said, I could not have been, I wouldn't, near, I wouldn't nearly feel as prepared um, buying parks if I didn't have the, the, the history with individual homes. I mean, I know individual homes and homes on land like, you know, the, bat, the back of my hand. Yeah. So that really helps. I mean, coming into this brand new, I could see being very scared, but this is the uh, sort of the natural progression, like you said. Nice, nice. Well, I'm proud of you, man. And I, I know you're helping a lot of people all around the nation. Um, and one thing that I think is cool about what you're doing is you're not just like another real estate guru who's like just selling a course. Like you actually partner with your students and your members. Like, let's tell people about that. How does that work? You know, there's a, so be, before I get into that, I would like to just, it's a, be a 30, a 30 second quick. Um, when I was working at that, at, at, at Altel, the, the phone store that, you know, I worked for when I was kind of learning this business um, or right before I was learning this business as well. Uh, there was a gentleman that came, that came into the office and I was working by myself and we, we were chit chatting and he said he was a real estate investor. And, you know, cause I asked, oh, what do you do? And, you know, we're, we're chatting, I'm signing up his phone and he's getting new service. And I, and he tells me, you know, what he does. And this is like the light bulb goes off. And this is when I was really hungry. So I remember asking him, Hey, can I do something for you? Like really humbly, like, can I help you? Can I follow you? Can I shadow you? Can I work for free? Can I give you like all my energy when I'm not here and you can train me? Like, I mean, you know, I was really, I knew what I was prepared to do for this guy, which was almost anything. So if he could teach me and, you know, and this was before real estate, this was before I read that book. So on your counter. So, um, with that said, he, I remember him giving, doing this, he gave this little chuckle like, <laughs> And he did the eye roll. And I remember that. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, what a so dick. Insulted, like by him, but just like that, like I knew how much fire I had and how much passion I had. So the point, I, the reason I bring that up is because those are the folks that I help. Those are the folks who I want to help. So I remember being in that situation and just, I just needed the, the, the channel. Like he could have pointed in the direction, John, go climb this mountain. And I would have done it. So talking to those people um, or thinking about those folks, those are the people who legitimately they want to build a business. I mean, if this is any, if I just described you, you know, watching this video right now, you have that passion inside you. You're a good person that wants to work hard. You're not afraid of working. You just need the viable plan and vehicle to get you there, whether it's stocks or trading or investing of some sort or selling Avon. So um, when I help people, I really try to, put myself and, and envision, you know, that they're that earlier version of me. So I guess with all that said, yes, I partner with people. Yes, I help make phone calls for them. Yes, I will lead by example. I mean, there's only so many, you know, A, there's only so many steps, you know, A through Z to, to be a big name, to be a big name for mobile homes in your local area. So there's only so many things that you have to do. And I could teach that to a preteen, you know, but a lot of this business is the how you're talking and interacting with people and the paperwork and follow up and taking action. So again, this business takes action, but for the folks listening, you know, if you're ready to step up, there's information out there, there's people, you know, ready to help you. And there, there are plans and pathways uh, to go ahead and do one deal and then another one and then another one. And John, I, I love your passion, man. And, and I can vouch for, for, you know, vouch for what you're saying. Like anybody listening to this, like John's the real deal. He actually gives a shit. He's one of the few guys in real estate that is helping people. And like he said, like he, he partners and actually helps his guys and ladies get, uh, get deals done. Um, and I think that's really rare. John, how many like states are you doing deals in right now with your people? Most of the, con most of the continental United States, I think I put two words together. Most of the con uh, continental U United States, not, uh, I am in, uh, we are in Alaska, not Hawaii. Hawaii doesn't have any mobile homes that we found. Um, and then probably missing a few states 
throughout it, you know, the main parts. But most states um, know the laws, the rules. Mobile home investing is popular in all states except for Hawaii and the District of Columbia. That's awesome, man. So you are literally like this, like you're everywhere right now. <laughs> it's been a really fun time. You know, like I said in the, in the beginning, like I knew that this was possible in the local market of Florida where we were, but just to have people and help people, you know, retire from their full-time jobs to go for mobile home investing, you know, make thousands of dollars, have a better life for themselves, you know, not... It, you know, this stuff takes, t- you know, it takes a little bit of energy. It takes time. It takes work. And it's been amazing to see people changing lives, not only the lives of themselves, but we make money by creating value. You know, all investors, we create value in other people's lives. So we have to help enough buyers and sellers in the community to make money and create value for ourselves and for everyone else. So it's just been great. Like this is Real estate investing isn't just a me, 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 me activity. You know, you're actually helping the community and you're getting paid for it. Um, so it's just been crazy, like learning the roots and it is, that this is possible and helping people. And, and I just went to a wedding last, uh, last month from a member who, I mean, it's so cool. Like, I mean, you know, just a lot of awesome things, really good relationships with, you know, so many of these folks around the country. That are That's there. great, man. That's great. Well, thanks for sharing everything today, man. I, I know uh, a lot of people got a lot of value out of it and it's always good to hear, you know, different pathways for how people are building wealth, especially like, you know, alternative ways, right? Like a lot of people think that they have to go to college, they have to get, get a degree, they have to have a lot of money to start a business, but we live in a day and age where it's like so easy to start a business, um, me, like easy in the sense that you don't have to have a million dollar ad budget, you know, and with the, the advent of the internet and the, the, just the plethora of information that's out there, like anybody can, can get started building wealth. And, uh, John, you you have just such a really cool pathway that you built for yourself. And I've seen you build your empire over the years and, and work with a lot of people. And it's just, it's really impressive. And I know that, uh, you put a, uh, what is it? A basically a basics course for free um, on how to get started investing in mobile homes. Correct. I want people to know, you know, what your market looks like. What are the first few steps? You know, getting that just that bird's eye view of your area to understand. Oh my God, there's a lot of potential out there. Or you know, no, this isn't something I want to do. But you know, to really get an understanding of their market and and a clear vision. I'm all about clarity. You know, confusion is terrible. There are answers out there for you. So ask questions, get them answered. But yes, that free course is really, really good stuff. Like Nice. Where, where can they go to grab that? Uh, that's going to be at mobilehomecashflow.com. Awesome. Mobilehomecashflow.com. So we'll, we'll link that up in the blog post and the, the video on YouTube and all that good stuff. But um, yeah, guys, I, I hope this was really valuable. John, thank you so much for uh, taking time out of your day, man. I know you're really busy and you're always like going, I, every time I talk to John, he's always in a different state, like driving somewhere or flying somewhere. I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, oh man, I got a deal or a park I'm looking at. And so it's cool that I was able to, to wrangle you down for an hour here. Absolutely. No problem. And thank you, Chris, for interviewing me. I mean, this and thank you for getting for being the conduit, if you will, for uh, for this whole, you know, it, these last 15 years of, uh, you know, finding real estate and then being able to help people online and um, and then, you know, surrounding yourself with like really, really like minded people, uh, ambitious people um, like yourself. And that's why you're doing these videos to for the people like you younger and older that don't want to make the same mistakes that are looking for that, that are hungry. So man, thank you. Like this is takes, takes time and energy for you. So yeah, absolutely. I mean, that, that's the idea, right? Is just to, uh, to spread the wealth and to, to help, uh, people that were kind of like us, right? Like in college, not really sure where to go. Kind of felt like, you know, losers at the time. And then like, you know, looking back, it's, it's just, awesome and interesting to see how far everything came. And like now, you know, we've traveled to, to Asia a couple times together and like gone scuba diving. And it's just, it's awesome to, to look back and see how things actually play out. And I just, my mission is to help that uh, happen for other people and, and just kind of push this mes- message of self-education and, and to help bring these alternative pathways to wealth. And I think mobile homes is super interesting Obviously, it's really profitable, and um, yeah, I would just encourage anybody who's interested in it to to go grab that free course from John because it's good stuff. Right on. Thank awesome. you so much again for this, Chris. Yeah, thanks, John. Have a great one, man. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.